My name is Jeroen Koren. Uh, I'm Yoon. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Semantic Media Wiki and structured data. Uh, so you can see here all of the extensions that we'll try to cover. Um, and this is a hands-on tutorial, so if you have a laptop, please feel free to go to this uh, URL, smwconberlin.referato.com. Uh, Referato has been, has been kind of uh, s slow or sluggish for the last week or so, so if, it, if it's taking a long time to load pages, we have an alternate URL, a wiki, where we can put stuff on. Um, can you uh, go, to, go to the... URL. Um, so basically the idea is we'll try to create some data structures uh, and then uh, we'll do something, stuff on the screen and then people can do stuff, um, uh, Berlin. Oh, that's bad. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay, let's, let's switch, let's switch. Instead of that, please go to discoursedb.org. Uh, that's D-I-S-C-O-U-R-S-E-D-B dot org. <clears throat> this is an actual wiki that has actual data on it, but that's fine. Um, we'll just create stuff and, uh, and you know, it'll, it'll be fine. So, so please, um, uh, please uh, create an account, uh, which won't, shouldn't take too long, uh, if you don't have one already. Um, <clears throat> the idea is, uh, uh, we'll start with semantic forms, um, and, uh, and semantic forms offers, I guess, I, 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 hopefully everyone, well it doesn't matter if you know about semantic forms or not, we'll get to that. Um, all of those are, the extensions listed before are extensions that rely on semantic media wiki, um, and most of them rely on a combination of Semantic Media Wiki and templates, or at least they're designed with that in mind. Um, so, um, oh yeah, you have to do the uh, cat anti-spam thing on here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> have you been happy with that? <laughs> what? Is that a good spam solution? It's supposed to be. Uh, <coughs> it's developed by Microsoft. And uh, it's pretty cool in, in, in theory. It's based on the idea that it's hard for computers to tell the difference between cats and dogs. <laughs> so, um, so, now, so now people are going to infest in how computers can make a distinction. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every anti spam solution is temporary anyway. And of course, there's no, there are, there are um, uh, you know, anti spam factories and stuff. I'm sure that just have people solving all these things. But in any case, um, um, okay, so the first step is well, once you do that, please go to the page um, special colon create class, um, which uh, which your room is going to now. This is a, this is a, um, a page defined by semantic forms, uh, but semantic forms extension that lets you create everything in one go. A, a, um, a category page, a template page, a form page, and property pages. Um, uh, should we have the lights off so that this is more visible, or does it not matter? I don't know. Oh yeah, let's pull the curtain in that um, oh, Okay, that's looking better. Sorry about um, uh, so, so let's just, uh, I think it'll be easier if everyone just uses this and then we'll, we'll look at the, the results and uh, it'll make, it'll, it'll, it'll be more obvious what's going on. Um, so, so if you have a laptop, please just think of a, uh, a class, a type of page. Um, you know, it could be of anything, it could be about uh, 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 clothing or cars or uh, people or... Um, uh, you know, something really specific. It, it, it doesn't matter. The key is, and uh, you know, you can. I don't know. Think so to type in something. What? First, we need to create an account, and then we can create a class. Right? Yeah, yeah. You can actually do it in anonymously too, so you don't actually have to create an account. This but it, it'll. Error. Uh, for create a class. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, I guess you do need to create an account then. 
<laughs> so that solves that problem. Um, um, Okay, cool. So, so Yarun is right now creating one for, for conferences, and actually that should be a, a singular for conference. There's, a, there's a sort of a naming convention that applies for the, this stuff. A template name is usually singular, a form name is usually the same as the template name, and then the category is usually a plural. Uh, other people have different naming conventions, and that's fine. That This is the one that I like to use. Um, and then the idea is, once you do that, please think of, of you know two or three or four different fields that could be used in there. It doesn't have to be you know the the, the best choices or anything. The key is try to think of, of things that are um, they're different. You know, have one that's a, 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 a that's a page and one that's a number and maybe one that's a coordinate and that sort of thing. Um, and um, uh, the property name is usually a, a verb uh, phrase. Like in this case, it's he put in has start date. Um, that's that's a convention. Again, it's a convention that some people use and some people don't. I, I like it because it, um, it it makes it clear what's going on with the relationship, what the relationship is between the the two things. And I, I guess Denny explained already the the whole idea of properties being uh, a, a relation of predicate between two. Uh, two concepts within a semantic triple. Um, so then a field name, I like to have uh, you know, an actual thing as opposed to you know, have spaces and stuff in the field name, but, but uh, I guess Maroon doesn't. Uh, but um, you can have spaces in the field name and make it look like English uh, or whatever language you want. Um, OK, so, so then the type, uh, Denny already explained property types, I assume, yeah. Um, uh, did you explain allowed values and enumerations back then? Okay, cool. Um, within a property definition, you can also give a, uh, a, a, a set of allowed values. Um, uh, I guess for this case, there's there's no um, there's no such uh, such thing. But but the idea is, if you want people within a form to have, say, a drop down or something like that, where where there's a set number of values that people can choose from. You would just you put that within the allowed values field and just separate them by comma, um, <clears throat> and then the last column in there is list of values, which you, you can see is checked for the uh, for the attendees field. That means that the field can hold more than one value, um, and then each value that that the the field within the template holds gets that property assigned to it. So if there's, you know, attendees are A, B, and C, it'll be has attendee A, has attendee B, and has attendee C within the page that's created. But that'll make more sense when you see it. Um, but those are the different things that you could set here within, uh, within the, the create class page. So um, this looks good. So once you're done, you can just, uh, you can just hit create. Uh, and then, <clears throat> It will create all of those, you know, in the background. So now, if you go to recent changes, you can see. Hopefully, other people created some stuff. Um, cool. People created. Uh, okay. Okay. What? Apparently, some of the properties already existed. Uh, okay, that's cool. I'll uh, fix that later. <laughs> what? You're looking forward to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. So, um, so now, now if you go to, uh, oh, can you re refresh again? It looks like it hasn't created everything yet. Uh, does it make sense uh, to, to check here if a property already exists? Yeah, it does. I mean, the the idea is. If you run the wiki, you already know what exists and what doesn't. It's not a huge deal. You can just see whether, whether there's the end next to it and stuff. Um, um, yeah, I mean, there's always a chance, especially if you have generic sounding properties that, that more than one template uses them. Usually that's fine. Um, yeah, I mean, for the case of has started, I don't know what what it held before. I, it probably had some extra documentation or something. Oh yeah, it's, it's, probably, right. it's probably not, not necessary, so I might just keep it as it is. 
Okay, cool. What, what happened? Why didn't it? Oh, there's the forum conference. So now if you, if you click on forum conference, here's the, uh, here's the real heart of semantic forms. It creates a forum page. Basically, a form is defined via a wiki page. There's a single page in the wiki that holds everything about that form. Now, this doesn't look like much. It's just you know a little bit of text and an input. Um, but actually, can you click on the edit tab? Um, it, um, all of this stuff is hidden from the user, but it includes an entire syntax for, for the actual display of the form. Uh, this is all in a combination of wiki text and semantic forms' own syntax. So for instance, there's this thing here, field attendees, that has the triple brackets around it, and that represents a single input within the form. Um, so what Semantic Forms does is when you go to edit with this form, it parses all of this on the fly to turn it into a form and then also um, parses the page that you're editing if you're editing an existing page to, to uh, let you edit with that. So okay, so I guess that's, an, that's enough of the form definition. So yeah, uh, can you um, just put in something, I don't know, for, I, would, I would guess that that was what you're going to put in. So. Um, so, so, so people, so, uh, so actually anyone can, if you go to, to the recent changes page, you can, you can click on any of those forms and, and do something similar. So, okay, so there you go, ta-da. It, um, oh, that's weird. <laughs> uh, okay, I don't know what happened there. Um, the, 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 those should be date inputs for the start date and the end date. Oh. Uh, and then, then the geographic. What? The semantic input. Semantic input. No, no, it's it should it should work. Okay. It should work. Um, I forgot. Uh, yeah. Wait. I don't know. Wait. What's this? Because it was existing before. I mean, it has kind of like yeah, uh, but wait. Why is this so? What happened to the rest of the stuff? Where? Yes, it it might. Uh, but where's all the other fields for this for this form? Why is it only start date? Maybe it's did somebody the answer users? the same thing as me? Did somebody Why? did somebody <laughs> also create the form? Because the history and the story happened. Because the history and find out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is another. This is who. Uh, that, that's uh, that's good actually. This is another demonstration of uh, of the power of, of wikis. The, the nice thing is it doesn't matter. Um, for you know, some people ask you, uh, you know, how do I make uh, how do I make all the form template stuff um, uh, protected so only I can modify it? There's a certain logic to doing that, but on the other hand, it really doesn't matter because as soon as you see something is failing, you could just go to the history. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <really bad>. <laughs> 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 Who thought this answer to this? I don't know why it's doing that. If, uh, oh, okay, you need to confirm. Uh, okay, that sucks. Um, uh, I could I could fix that. Like, uh, yeah. Um, anyway, um, yeah. If something doesn't fail, you can just go to the history page, and ideally, you don't have this whole anti-spam thing, and then it just takes you know five seconds to revert. <laughs> Uh, a change. Um, okay, you probably need to do that same thing with the template page. Also, uh, also go into the history of that one and uh, and, and revert that one. Um, and then, in the meantime, uh, you guys can feel free to um, to uh, to go into uh, other forms that people have created. I see one called Hostel, and there's uh, there was one called Website and stuff. And just enter in stuff so you get a sense for how forms work uh, and what the resulting page looks like. Um, and then, yeah, okay. Uh, if this keeps happening, I'll just uh, I could just log in and, and change the permissions. I I didn't even realize that this was. Well, you can never have enough cats in a presentation. That so is true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> going to be the greatest presentation ever. Um, 
Okay. Yeah. Okay, it's looking better already. So you can see uh, a few things here. Um, there's date inputs for the, for the dates, and then the attendees field is larger than the other ones because it knows that it's going to take multiple values. Um, so, um, although it's where the coordinates... Yeah, it's probably the properties also probably changed. Oh, uh, maybe. Um, I guess, is that worth... Uh, well, you can just manually set that in the form or something to... I don't know. Um, <clears throat> so there's a bunch of things that the semantic forms provides automatically. One is the, the date inputs. Um, another, <coughs> uh, you have a space there. Oh, okay, that worked anyway. Okay, well, I don't know. Uh, yeah, just manually add uh, property equals. The, it, it doesn't always work. Uh, you, you know, the, the semantic forms doesn't always realize, oh, this this field belongs to uh, this template which corresponds to this property, so you, there's always ways to manually make that association. Um, uh, that's fine. Um, yeah, I can. I just need to, to log into uh, Discourse TV. Um, this is a Microsoft um, product. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's cool, though. I mean. Yeah, so are the ribbons. Okay, so here's another, here's another awesome uh, form input. And um, uh, uh, Jeroen will talk about this, because uh, this, this actually comes from the semantic maps extension. Um, but if you have um, you, if you have a property of type geographical coordinate, then you can have a map input to it, which is really helpful. Um, okay, so yeah, so if you if if you just you know stick in some random stuff and save the page, um, or stick in some actual yeah, well you yeah you can if you want to talk about this part. I, don't know. Yeah, I mean, basically, it lets you do a uh, lets you look up coordinates. Is maybe Berlin wasn't enough? Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Cool. So now it created this. It's creating this page. Uh, should maybe I should. Um, okay. Well, do you have Putty or is there a Telnet thing or something? Uh, SSH. Yeah. Cool. So next, so I have. Yeah. SSH. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't need Putty. Uh, Talk about maps. <laughs> um, sure. So, um, very cool thing about semantic forms is that it uh, has a bunch of hooks that allow other extensions to extend it, such as uh, semantic maps, um, which then adds the uh, map input you just saw. Uh, semantic maps itself is an extension to semantic media wiki that um, adds uh, handling for geographical coordinates. Um, also, how do I do the at sign? Sorry. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. I'll oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, it adds a geographical coordinates data type for semantic media wiki, um, which then allows you to query on it and do like funky stuff like filter on latitude and longitude, uh, filter on proximity, like you can do a query that then gets all coordinates that are within a certain distance of a point that you provide. Um, cool. And you can also uh, do uh, ask queries, or yeah, queries on which then you aggregate um, points and other data onto maps, uh, which can be like Google Maps or Open Layers. Uh, semantic Maps supports multiple services, so it's like up to you which one you pick. And uh, it has like a whole bunch of options, so you can choose like how you, how you want to have the map displayed, like. Pretty much everything you can imagine, like the, the height and stuff like that. Uh, but also, like the map types you want to load uh, and want to have available. There even is, uh, since one of the more recent versions is uh, support for Google Earth, that you can, oh, yeah. like, if you have Windows or Mac, then you can, like, really have the Google Earth experience and set the tilt and whatnot. Why not on Linux? Um, because the Google Earth 
client is not supported on Linux, which is uh, not very fun. Oh, yeah, okay. It's also not really uh, that well supported anymore by Google itself, I think, because their version 2 API of Google Maps supported it natively, but version 3 doesn't anymore. So, well. Okay. Uh, this, forgot this is a German keyboard, so it's like. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a French keyboard. Oh, it's, oh, it's French. Okay. <laughs> 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 All the numbers on the uh, shift. <laughs> I find it all strange that the French do not work with numbers that much. <laughs> because all numbers are on the shift. So. <laughs> it's, it's a very good way of showing that you're not interested in numbers. It's <laughs> culture. <laughs> I think I just disabled confirm it. And hopefully that makes things easier for everyone else too. Um, so, okay, cool. Uh, what happened to the coordinates? Oh, you didn't enter them. Okay, that's fine. Um, so now, you see, in addition to the standard edit tab that MediaWiki provides, there's also an edit with form tab, um, which means that, that once a page is created, you can always go right back to the form. Uh, in this case, it's not very uh, dramatic because there was nothing there before, but um, uh, once you... Um... Ah, excellent. Cool. But once you enter some, some information, Um, you can, um, uh, you know, you, it, it shows up in the page, and then when you re-edit with edit with form, it shows up again within the form. Um, so, okay. So now, actually, can you go back to edit with form again? Um, um, there's also now auto completion in that last attendees field. If you, um, if if you, or if you erase those and then type them again, it should show. Up. Oh yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, oh, that was, that was weird. Okay. Um, cool. I guess, uh, yeah, okay, so, so, so in another page, somebody also, somebody created, uh, I guess, another conference page uh, and entered the value, uh, pro, uh, value of Jesse. Um, for it, within auto, for auto completion, it just goes and looks to see every value that, that already has been entered with that property. Uh, corresponding to that field. So all of that just comes out of the box. You don't even need to um, uh, set anything special for that. Um, so, um, uh, I don't know, what should we talk about? If you go, can you go to the, the conferences page, actually? Um, okay, cool, so, okay, nice. We have two pages here for, for this same conference. Um, the, um, this, this page... <laughs> We have competing pages. Um, uh, uh, if you see, this page was created automatically by that first create class thing. If you see, uh, okay, cool. Uh, if you see at the top, this category uses the form conference. That's how that edit with form tab um, shows up uh, in the pages automatically. It's because you specify here within the category page the connection between pages in this category and that, that form. So you can see here behind the scenes, this, uh, it, it's not just a link to the form conferences, it's a, it's a property of its own. This is what's known as a special property, and I, I, Denny might have covered that. Um, it's a predefined property within semantic forms, has default form that says any page within this category will, has that, has the, the form called conference as its form, so you should put an edit with form tab at the top of it. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, does anybody have questions so far? Um, has anybody tried creating, yeah? I didn't really get the difference between the, um, 
in this metric class thing? Yeah. The difference between the field and the property. So, so. Right, okay. Um, the field that was created is the name of the template parameter. Okay. <clears throat> which can be the same as the property or different. Um, yeah, I guess it's worth going to... Yeah, right, right. Why, sh why should it be different? I mean, should it ever be different? I think it should. I, uh, I'm just used to the, the convention where the, the property name is a verb and the, the, per, the template parameter name is not. Um, there, are, there are borderline cases where it's nice to have that. For instance, if you have a field called capital, I guess that maybe that's the classic case. It's not clear whether you're saying, uh, if you just have a property called capital, it's not clear whether you're saying this is the capital of that or this has the capital of that. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, when you have uh, multiple values, so if you have a list, then the property name will be like has at and D, it will be singular, while the field name yeah. will be at and D, so which will then have the, all the values separated. Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a good one. That's actually maybe an even better one. Um, did you talk about templates? Yeah. I guess you did. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess it's worth looking at the template. Can you go to the, the page template conference? Um, this is uh, just to see what how uh, semantic forms creates this. Um, this is what's I guess what's known as a semantic template. It's a template that has uses. Uh, okay, this is the, the the introduction of it. But the, the actual thing um, it uses a semantic property to store each of its values. So for instance, for has for for start date it says um, use this uh, display with this property or call this property has start date on that. Field. So that does two things. It both displays it to the user and then stores it behind the scenes using Semantic Media Wiki. Now the interesting thing here is the attendees one. You see it's different from the other ones. It uses a parser function called ArrayMap, uh, which is defined by semantic forms. Um, uh, and all Ar ArrayMap is actually not a semantic function per se. All it does is says, take this value here, um, Separate it out by this thing, which is a comma, and then for every value, treat it, treat that as x, and apply this mapping onto it. And hopefully, that's that's not as confusing as it sounds. Um, uh, so basically, you know, attendees in this case uh, was uh, Yaron, Yaron, Jesse, whoever. It, it 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 takes each of those, treats them as x, and then applies this thing uh, to it, so that. Um, in, you know, you saw that it had a separate link for each one of those, uh, and they were also being stored separately. That's how that's how it's done. So, so array map is a really useful uh, parser function. Just a hint. Um, I see that this uh, default um, 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 variable is x, and yeah. uh, which can occur in a name. So why that's right. don't we uh, use the triple at or something for the? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. That comes up every once in a while. Maybe it should be something uh, less likely to uh, show up. Yeah, so but you can always X won't cause problems, right? What? I mean, it doesn't. The the, the X won't cause problems if it's in the name, right? It's no, it, it, no, but it'll it'll cause a problem if it's if if instead of attendees it were called uh, you know uh, excellent attendees or something. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's only within. Uh, I think that's right. I'm not sure. It can cause problems. Um, um, uh, gosh. Okay. Uh, um, okay. What time? Okay. How are we doing? So. So. Um, so maybe we should move on to uh, to drill down, and then we can talk about the the result formats stuff. Um, uh, let's see. We have um, okay. So drill down semantic drill down is another extension. It defines this page called special browse data, and here because it's an existing wiki, there's already a lot of categories that that, that, that weren't created. But let's see what's. Uh, What's a conf What's a, a category here we can use? We can use conferences again, or we can use something else like websites. Has uh, well, just yeah, anyone who's fine. Yeah. Um, okay. So so by default, um, the the browse data for each specific category just just shows all the elements of that category. 
But semantic drill down lets you add filters that you can then use to filter the, the, the contents of uh, that category. Um, maybe websites is more interesting because in this case it's two pages that are in theory identical. Okay, cool, nice. Um, so, so um, uh, can you go to one of them and see what the, the properties are? Okay, cool. That's, uh, okay, nice. <laughs> um, right, so, so maybe online is a good property to uh, filter on. I guess it can be either yes or no. Um, uh, so, um, can you uh, look at the um, at the the browse property thing on the, in the sidebar? Browse properties. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sidebar. Uh, yeah, it's this the, the last link in the sidebar. This is another useful one to know about. Uh, although, although Denny might have mentioned it, this uh, shows you that if you if you click on the, on the last link at the bottom of the sidebar, you can see all the semantic properties. Um, so okay, so we have a property called is online, uh, which I guess is a boolean. Um, so we can filter on that so that if you have you know a thousand different websites, you can easily select only the ones that are online or only the ones that aren't, whatever that means. Um, uh, so uh, can you go to um, the page special create filter? Uh, and you guys are feel free to, to to also do this for any properties that you have in in, in the classes that you've created. Um, if you go to this, the page special create filter, it, um, it this this is a, a, a helper form that's defined by semantic drill down. It lets you uh, define a filter so that users can uh, filter on that on that property. So uh, you could call this you know online or whatever, um, and then it gives you a, a, a it. Every filter corresponds to exactly one property, so it gives you here a drop down. This is probably going to be a monstrous drop down. Um, so it's not that bad. I, yeah, is online should be in there somewhere. Yeah, there it is. Um, so you, most of the time, you can feel free to ignore everything else. Um, the default settings are, are fine, you know, 90, 95 percent of the time or something. I think you can just save this. Uh, can the person that created uh, the website thing will do the same? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, okay. <laughs> what, extension, what extension does that create? It's called semantic drill down. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, cool. So now we have this filter, it has its own wiki page, and, and uh, there's two steps, and this was the first step. The only other step is to add this filter to the category page. Unfortunately, that has to be done manually. Because um, special create class doesn't handle filters and drill down stuff, it just handles the form stuff. So if you just go to the, the page called category websites, I guess if you if you go back and then click on the yeah, um, <clears throat> I, I usually do it right next to the the default form uh, uh, declaration. You just need an, another one similarly, or you can just have the the property. It's it's I think uses filter. It's either use, uses filter or has filter. I forgot. I th oh, it's has filter. It's has filter. Um, <clears throat> and this one, unlike the other one, requires the filter namespace in the page. Don't ask why. It's, there's no good reason. Um, yeah, okay. So that's, that's all you need. Uh, it's a little bit of uh, weird syntax to learn, but, but that's, that's, that's all it takes. And then if you go to the, the, the browse data page again, um, uh, for for websites, it will show excellent. Okay. Well, this is not very exciting, uh, but but other people are free, should feel free to create uh, websites uh, website pages. Okay, you can do that too. <laughs> um, oh boy. Yeah, you no, need to go to uh, the uh, browse data page. Normally, the browse data page is. Is not so overwhelming because there's less categories. Okay, cool. So there you go. So if you click on one of those, it will filter uh, by that value. Um, which is not that exciting in this case because we only have two pages in the entire category. But hopefully you can extrapolate from that and see um, what uh, <clears throat> uh, you know. Imagine 
having lots of filters. Actually, maybe it's worth showing showing a real thing. Um, like, uh, uh, can you go to to a techpresentations.org slash special browse data? Oh, oh, wait. Actually, I'm sorry. You don't even need to do that. You can just yeah, right there is a good one. Uh, if you click on other categories within Discourse DB, forget the tech presentation thing, uh, you can see that you can have you know an overwhelming number of values. Uh, the, this date thing is interesting. You know, you may wonder you know how, how can you filter on the date if each on a date property if each uh, you know you don't want a thousand different dates within this drill down page, but you can actually specify a date range so that it groups them in this case by month. You can group by either month or year. So it puts them in buckets like this, and then you can you can uh, select. That was one of the options within that big create filter page. Yeah. Uh, just a question. Am I right that this uh, putting things into buckets and figuring out this choice list is what makes it computationally most expensive? So that's yes. where the real work happens. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Semantic drill down is uh, is in fact computationally expensive. Uh, this it's an issue for uh, Wikia, the uh, the big wiki farm uh, allows people to use semantic drill down. Uh, and it, uh, it, uh, there they've complained about it. Uh, the the big issue is that it, it you know it lists the number of pages that correspond to each value, uh, which means each one of those requires its own uh, database query. Um, but for smaller wikis, it's fine. Um, at least that, that that's been my experience, uh, and it's quite helpful to be able to see the uh, you know to see at a high level what the data looks like. I think this is a, a superior interface, a drill down approach is superior to a search approach. Um, because with search, you, you're just basically bl flying blind. You don't know how many, how many results you're going to get by, click, by setting any specific set of inputs. Uh, but that's, I guess, a philosophical question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is it possible some folks to put all these browsing data uh, embedded in other pages? Or? Yes, you can do that. Uh, I don't know if it's worth showing. Basically, you just need to, to uh, do something. Uh, you can embed it the same way you would a, 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 any other page with uh, double brackets and colon in the beginning. So, mm -hmm. um, so, um, so yeah, that's um, that's uh, that's semantic drill down. Uh, yeah. But one question: Is it possible to combine the semantic drill down with a semantic result format? You know, like cho yes. choosing some attributes <coughs> and then and having the result set uh, format in any way. Yeah, can you can you click on a th uh, city? Uh, not city. Are you used to work? One of these, I thought. Maybe, maybe some of the also tools. Oh yeah, wait. Cities used to. No, I, th I thought it was city. Um, okay. This is looking weird. Uh, it's I think it was City. It's not working right now, but uh, I don't know what's going on. Well, but it's this, possible. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, basically, within the um, within the category page, you just need to specify the the parameter. So in this case, it it was showing that all of them within a all the cities within a map. Okay. And then when you filtered it down, it just showed less points on that oh, same map. Cool. Okay. And you define it in the category. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So the, um, the filter, like uh, when you browse data, does it then have an author and say an author? These are two filters you define, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, when, can I say like an author name like that David something? Well, uh, like any author um, name David, whatever the last name is. Do I have to give it exactly the name of? Can I only get it from the... Oh, I see. Yeah, well, the, yeah. Actually, well, in that case, what uh, what you saw there was a different input type. It was a, a combo box instead of just a series of values. That's worth showing, too, I guess. Uh, oh, are you going to... Well, what's going on here? Interesting. Um, uh, yeah, if, if, as soon as... What the... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I think that's some some CSS thing or something. Uh, um, yeah, if you go back to items, um, you can also have a combo box uh, instead of, um, and that, this is another setting for within the filter, within create filter. Um, so for here, 
it, one advantage is it l lets you do substrings. So if you just type in like uh, like uh, D or something like that, <coughs> yeah, just, just, and then just click out of it and hit search. Uh, I guess it won't be obvious, but it will show now only uh, only authors that only items by authors who. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ideally, anything you click on here will have uh, will have been written by someone whose name contains the letter D. Um, that, that's the that's oh sorry that's the idea anyway. Uh, in editorial board. Okay, we, we have a D. So I guess it would be more impressive if it were like uh, if you picked some random character like X or something. Okay. Uh, I don't think. Oh okay okay it is case sensitive yeah okay. Um, Actually, the case sensitivity thing, I, I think, depends on your database settings. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, it, uh, yeah. Any, any other questions about semantic drill down? Um, okay, so we can, we can move on. How much time do we have? We have another 40 minutes. Okay, cool. Uh, we, can talk about, um, we can talk about the result formats uh, and maps. Uh, you know, just queries in more detail, or we can do uh, uh, multiple instance templates and semantic internal objects. I don't know. Uh, you, you're in. Do you want to? Do you want to talk about result formats or? or uh, well, we? um, at least I would be interested in uh, semantic internal object thing. Okay. At least okay. In some works, some <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Maps. Well, there's, we can only do one right now. We will do the other. Uh, well, I will be giving a lightning talk, small lightning talk about maps. So. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we'll get time to have time to do both. Uh, okay. Let's do the internal objects one. Um, so the idea is this: the form stuff is all nice, but there's there's plenty of information that you can't just express using you know field value field value. Uh, uh, Anything that's in the, that's in the form of a table, a table of if you want to have a table of data within a wiki page, you can't do that. Um, so um, so let's go. Let's you know. Let's think of what. In, oh, internet. Yes. Yeah, I was thinking of something with it that we can create here. Um, for uh, well, for for conferences, if you wanted to store additional information about each attendee. Um, uh, you know uh, their uh, their name and also their uh, their uh, their uh, um, IRC nickname and their homepage or something like that. Uh, you obviously could just have a page for each attendee, uh, but if you wanted to store it all in on one page, um, then uh, actually maybe a better example is you could have uh, you could have talks all be uh, shown within the form. Uh, for, for people, it probably makes sense to have a separate page, but you could have, uh, you know, um, a table of information of, of, you know, the names of talks and the start time and end time and something like that, or just the name of the talk and the name of the presenter. Um, so you can't, you can't, you know, what, what Yerun is doing is just adding a field called talks, but the problem with that is it only lets you enter a string. If you want to have more than that, you're going to have a table of information. So the way to do that is you create a separate template just for that, just to represent each row of that table, uh, um, and then and forms can support that. And then to store the information behind the scenes within Semantic Media Wiki, there's actually two ways. Uh, you can do it using the record type, or you can do do it using the extension called Semantic Internal Objects. Uh, we're only going to show you the Semantic Internal Objects approach because I think that's the superior one. But um, uh, uh, that's I, I, again, I guess, a matter of opinion. Um, so, can can you create a, a template? You can you actually use just use special create class to create a, a, a template for uh, for conference talk. Um, <clears throat> uh, this will uh, this will create you know uh, too too many things things that we can later uh, ignore, but but that's fine. Uh, you actually need to specify a category name or else it won't work, but we can get rid of that later. So just, I don't know, just give it, just maybe, maybe just the, 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 um, the name of the talk and the, um, and the, the presenter or something like that. 
just to keep it simple. Um, um, <clears throat> ideally, special create class could support semantic internal objects uh, directly, but it doesn't. So we'll have to do it manually. Um, but the idea is uh, <clears throat> semantic internal objects defines what, uh, what some people call n-ary relations, where the, um, where the, the subject of the, uh, the triple is not the page it's on, is not a, a, an, an entity that has its own name. Um, okay, cool. So, so if you go now to the, the template that was created, um, we just have to modify it. Um, basically, both the, both the form and the template have to be modified, so actually you can do either one. Um, sorry to, to make you do this on the spot, but basically, the, the, instead of it having those, those semantic properties within, uh, within the, in the same place where they're displayed, it instead has to be a call to a, a parser par function called set internal. Um, which uh, I guess just put it above the, the table call. Um, and what set internal does uh, is <clears throat> it, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. What set internal does is it, it sets the uh, full set of, uh, of values within an internal object, and then each instance of this template gets its own internal object, and this will make more sense once you see it in action. Um, uh, cool, except that we, we still need the table in order to display the information. Just display it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, there's one final thing, okay, great. There's one final thing that set internal needs, and that's a um, and that's a, a starting property, which connects the internal object to um, to uh, to the page that it's on. So it should be called uh, um, it should be called presentation uh, talk for conference or presentation in conference or something like that. Talk. Yeah, cool. So what does this do? Every time this template is called. Uh, the set internal parser function creates a new internal object um, <clears throat> that has these values within it, and then also connects itself to the the, the page that the uh, that it's located on. So, uh, okay, that should work. Um, yeah, you can just save it. Uh, you also now need to create a property called uh, talk for conference. You can do that using special create property, I guess. Um, sorry, this is kind of, you know, <coughs> haphazard, but um, uh, this is another helper form that Semantic Forms provides just for creating a single property. I think it was called Talk for Conference. Uh, this is the, the main uh, property of the set internal page. Yeah, that's correct. It, you can just save it, I think. Okay. So now we're, we're I guess, a third of, uh, two thirds of the way there. Now all that needs to be done is uh, modifying the form to add in that template. Um, and I'm really glad I'm not doing this now at the same time I'm, that I'm uh, talking about it. Um, so now we just need a second for template loop. Um, so basically, you see the, these fields called for template and end template. That specifies all of these fields within the middle here correspond to the template called. Oh, okay. You're on the template called. You're on the form called conference talk. Okay, yeah. You need to cool. copy that out and then put that into the form called conference. Um, so we have, you know, this is the, the standard appearance for a form, but a form can have more than one template within it, uh, and that's useful when you have multiple instance templates. Uh, so now, okay. So, so now he's going to add that in after that previous template. Um, with, the, with the one, okay, cool. And now the, the one new thing that he needs to add is specifying that this is a multiple instance template. So he just, you, you just need to put in the parameter multiple after, um, 
after that. And and feel free, you know, if if you uh, if you think you're, if, if, feel free to try this out with with any classes that you've created. Um, it's a bit of a complex process, but um, that's that's that, that should just work, I think. Um, I guess we'll see. But uh, if you now go to some conference, you can type in the same one or a different one. Um, cool. So we, we see all the stuff before, and then there's this add another thing. Oh, I guess it would have helped to have a label thing in the, in the form page, but whatever. Um, yeah, I guess that would help. But if, if you just click on that, actually. Um, uh, it's kind of, there's, there's nothing actually here that says what this is that would have, that would have helped. But um, if you just type in, just type in, you know, just uh, any, any random thing. Um, and the name of a presentation, and then, uh, okay, cool. Uh, and then the, the presenter. In this case, you, there is actually a way to also have this hold multiple values, but we didn't do that. Excellent, that's, that's both of us together. Um, so, okay, so now, um, yeah. now the, the, that's a JavaScript button, so it lets you add in any number of, um, of presenters, and then uh, and you can also remove them or rearrange them at the end. Uh, you, you can actually, yeah, yeah, flip those around. So now, um, yeah, you can just save, if, if you just save the page now, it will also, um, it will show this. Uh, there's nicer ways to display this, but I, uh, so that it doesn't look so uh, so spacey. Uh, and you can have it display as a table of information. But that's the basic idea. You have a, a, basically a table of information. Um, yeah. So you don't even need to like actually display it in the template itself. You can <coughs> use the internal object to store the data and then query it on the page. Yeah. Actually, maybe we should. Performance-wise, <laughs> and I mean it has some update issues, of course, but well, it doesn't have update issues anymore. Yeah. 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 Well, actually, maybe uh, maybe it's, it's worth. Actually, if I might suggest at this point, yeah. if you are a bit uh, advanced in this as things, it might be a good idea to look at the variable extension for MediaWiki and store it locally instead of putting it to the database and then querying it again from the database in order to display it on the same page where you already entered it. So there's a variable extension where you can just basically set the string during parsing and keep it. Yeah, I mean, if the goal is only to display it on that page, then yes. But if you wanted to, for instance, have a table of all the presentations from all the conferences. No, of course, store it anyway. I'm just saying oh, okay. that if you want to display it elsewhere on the page, it might be a good idea to not have a query for every place where you want to display it. Uh, and having it in a local variable is much easier. Okay, yeah. So the way that you presented it uh, here, you're using kind of property names to store the values of the internal object. Right, exactly. Isn't this the same way that MacWorks do it now? Uh, yeah, uh, internal objects are easier to query. Uh, and uh, what are the, I guess that's the main advantage. And can you show the citation? Yes. Yeah. How can I query them? Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so here's a real life example of, of, uh, of the, the internal objects in multiple instance templates in use. But if you go back to, um, to that the, uh, discourse DB thing, um, uh, um, maybe, the te maybe the conference template, maybe you can just add a query to the conference template itself. Um, um, uh, right. So basically, once you store it that way, you can just query it as if it's just any regular semantic uh, data. Um, so you have, uh, right, so what would it be? It would be conference for, uh, talk for conference. Right, but it would be ask uh, you know talk for talk for conference double colon page name. Um, and the idea is, <clears throat> if you remember that talk for conference thing is the property that links an internal object to the to the the page that it's sitting on. So here we're saying we want everything that every internal object uh, that that has this property pointing to the name of the page that we're on. And then for that, 
for, for each of those, display those other two things, uh, whatever it was, has presenter, and uh, it's, it's in the other, uh, I don't know, whatever it was. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's easier, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I guess Marcus, feel free to chime in if you disagree, but, uh, but it's, it's easier to have fine-grained control over what exactly properties you want to display and, uh, and also the, uh, uh, what properties you want to filter on. Uh, I think I have to comment on that a bit, because uh, since the Magic Media Wiki 1.6 records effectively are internal objects, so that difference in practice isn't really big. Because yeah, but the query syntax is, uh, I, I don't even same. know, can I mean, it's the same, it's really the same, I mean, I can't say anything else, but uh, the only difference between internal objects and records is that if you set a record value, then the property that has the value will point from the page that you have the value on to the value, like with all other values. Whereas with internal objects, it's the other way around, it points from the object to the page. You have to be aware of this difference, but it doesn't in practice really make, uh, I mean, neither is more powerful, uh, and neither is generally better or more simple, it's just different. And you can, because SMW supports inverse properties by just adding a minus after the property name, you can always just change the direction if you like in a query, it doesn't make a big difference. But otherwise, since SMW 1.6, every rec record property has a name, in itself as well. So a, a record basically also is just an internal object with property values assigned in an order. And you can create for these properties individually and you can filter them. You can, it's really like an internal object in that sense. Uh, okay. I, I... Uh, but I don't say that records are so convenient to handle. I think it will be good to have something like internal objects in semantic media wiki. Well, so uh, it's that's really cool. a different sort of Okay. Yeah, well, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. The syntax is different. I think it's, e it's easier, but, uh, more again, logical. But not on the query level, because on the query level, it's exactly the same. Records give you an additional option to query with record syntax, but you could also query them directly like internal object. So in queries, you are actually more flexible with records, but in annotation, you are more bound to the record style annotation, and this is not so nice. Okay. Um, okay. So maybe like that. So yeah. for the for the internal uh, objects, can you uh, have uh, uh, allowed values for the properties? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's another difference. Yeah. <laughs> you can have uh, allowed values. You can have that in records too, since one six. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, special, so change in one six was that instead of just specifying data types in an order to declare a record, you would specify property names in an order to declare a record. So every every part of a record is, has its own property and you can have allowed values or output units or whatever you want for this. So it's really, that's why I'm saying it's really almost the same now. Okay. Uh, yeah, but one yeah. thing I don't know, I don't care if I'm talking about with semantic terminology, you can group different properties maybe inside the page. Yes. In a template, and that's maybe one of the advantages. Yeah. Yeah, but... say click, click, and then you have this two are related, and then this other one. But... Uh, hmm. I mean, I don't, we, we shouldn't, shouldn't put it into much detail. Um, the main difference is that records require a fixed format. So with a record, you have always the same properties in this object, whereas with internal objects, you can have arbitrary properties. But once you entered it, whether you just happen to enter the same properties that you had for the record in an internal object, or whether you have done it with a record, it isn't a difference. The data looks the same, or almost the same, with the exception of this different order of yeah. Okay. I, I guess I, I, it's been a while since I looked at records. I, I, so, so I, I, I am, I'm, yeah. I think they're, uh, they're, they're, better, they're more sophisticated than I thought they were. Yeah. yeah. And the uh, uh, SMB or maybe we have a little section telling us about the difference between uh, the time record and semantic internal objects. Perhaps it would be nice to uh, elaborate that this difference a bit yeah. better when it's presently there and to update to the uh, recent version 1.6 right. plus um, because I think it's yeah. I really only understood half of it but I think it's really interesting yeah. Yeah. for others too to, to have it yeah. too. 
I think yes. If, if you can document this, it was, would help us. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, what's the purpose to define internal you know, object and uh, right. uh, reference in general? Like, uh, yeah, okay. So that brings us back to, to what, what your rune just created, which is a, a nicer way of displaying that data. This is actually the page querying itself in order to display that same information nicely. Um, so this is actually, this is, this is, um, this is coming, this, this is all data that's stored internally, that's stored using semantic internal objects here. Um, and the idea is, using regular semantic properties, you can't store a whole table of information. You can just store uh, one thing, like a start date. But if you have a, a table of information like this, where, where each talk has its own data associated with it, then you need, you can't just use the standard properties, you have to use something, something else. And that, that's, in this case, semantic eternal objects, or you could use records. Uh, but the, basically, you can just think of it as a way to store a table or an array of information within a single page. So you could say, instead of creating a new page for every yep. of these right. rows, you can just create it as rows in, inside one page. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A less, lot less work. Yeah. And, th and there are cases where that makes a lot of sense. There are cases where, where, you, where it makes sense to create a page, and there are cases where it doesn't. I guess one classic case where it makes sense to have something like this is if you have a page about a recipe, and then you want a, a a different, you, you want to store each row of ingredients or something, you're not going to make a separate page for each, for each uh, ingredient. You, you, you want to have that all within one page. So uh, if you want to store it semantically, this is the way to go. Yeah, this is an example of the huge oh, okay, yeah. They basically a uh, form uh, that added a meme, um, and they have images associ associated with them, and these can have description, basically a caption, and this information is then stored with internal objects and then on the page itself it's queried and displayed using the uh, um, gallery format provided by the semantic result format extension. So this is then the data queried. Yeah. That's like a really popular site, but... So could you summarize it as, as like collecting a group of data into one article instead of having it spread out over a whole yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and and the the limit is just a two dimensional table. You can't have a three dimensional table at that, at that point. You're going to have to make a have a new page for something, have a page type for something along the way. Um, um, so um, yeah, that that yeah. Shoot. Oh, okay, um, I looked again. Just yeah. Does it work if one of the properties of the internal object has type record? I mean, does it technically work? If you try it? No, it doesn't. Uh, just because it uh, it could, but it just doesn't support it. It could. I Do just never add it. In forms at all? Uh, not. No. I mean, yes and no. I mean, you can always just manually associate each field with a property within the form, regardless of what's going on in the template, whether it's using records or whatever else. Um, so, but, but it doesn't. It doesn't actively know about records, so you just have to manually do the association with properties. Uh, yeah, somebody asked at some point about records, and I just never looked into it. Uh, adding the little bits of code that that would support that. But that's an interesting yes. idea. I guess. I don't, know. Uh, I don't maybe, know how that would let's work. Let's that offline. Yeah, I just yeah, I don't, yeah, it I mean, works at all. I'm not sure if it's <laughs> little bits, but yeah. I don't. I'm not even. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how okay. useful that would be. But, um, so okay. So that's so that's the that's the idea of um, of the multiple instance stuff. Um, and uh, what haven't we covered? I guess uh, the, I guess the the the, the big remaining thing, I mean, there's plenty of, st of additional stuff within semantic forms. Um, you, you know, you, you, uh, you saw the auto-completion and the different types of date inputs. Uh, there's also, um, uh, there's, there's, a, uh, there's a whole bunch of other kinds of, of date inputs. Uh, if you go to um, special create form, that one, um, Basically, in addition to create class, there's there semantic forms also provides helper pages for each element of that, for categories, for templates, for forms, and for properties. Uh, you also saw you saw the property one, but this form one, if you just specify any random template in here, 
No, it, it, it just add it up, yeah. Just add a template. It, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter. Um, you can see here, uh, this is like, just provides a, a lot more, um, uh, you know, gives a better sense for all the different functionality that forms can have. If you cl click on any of those input type drop downs, you can see all the different input types that, um, uh, <clears throat> that, that fields can have. In this case, because it's a, of type string, it minimizes and just shows you the, the ones that are relevant there. Uh, there's also, um, oh, combo box is an interesting one. Uh, it's like a combination of autocompletion and drill down. There's also, um, the, uh, for the enumerated values, there's drop down, radio buttons, check boxes, um, uh, list box, uh, yeah. The, and then, okay, yeah. Uh, and then once you do select an input type, you can uh, there's the other parameters thing, which if, if you if you show it, it, you, it shows all the all the additional parameters that you can um, that you can specify for a specific form field, and it's quite a lot. Um, uh, <clears throat> it's sort of all the uh, all the the, the cumulative <coughs> stuff that, that people have uh, have needed for. Uh, for creating form inputs, you can specify that it's mandatory so then the, the, the form won't let you save it until the user fills in that value, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, the uploadable one is interesting. Uh, I don't know if you can, is there, uh, does, does that O Internet one have, a, have an upload file link? Uh, that's possible, I don't know. Um, Uploadable basically lets you um, uh, lets you put a little upload file link near the, the near the form input so that you can. Um... Well, it does. Okay, so there you go. Yeah. Um, right. But I okay. need to log in, so. Right. It basically lets you um, lets you. Um, uh, uh, let's say a user upload a file and then put the, the name of the uploaded file within the corresponding form field all at the same time um, so that they don't have to you know upload it and then remember the, the, the file name string and then remember how to, where to put it in the, the form and stuff like that. Um, uh, yeah, have, I don't know, have, have people been, been creating stuff, uh, filters or forms or whatever in the meantime? Um, I don't know if anyone has questions about um, specific stuff. Um, the, uh, the only other thing I want to talk about with forms was show on select. I don't know if we have time for that. Um, maybe we should just uh, go right to result formats and maps and stuff. Sure. I guess we should do that. Very briefly, you can have you can have show you can do a show on select uh, parameter, which lets you. Um, um, it's it's good for enumerated uh, inputs like checkboxes and radio buttons and stuff. You can say if the user selects this specific value out of a out of a series of values or clicks this specific checkbox, then show then this other part of the form which previously was hidden will get displayed. Um, so it's uh, you know it's good for a variety of things. Um, it's good for stuff like. Questions that only make sense if you selected if you select if you specified yes for another question, uh, you know, uh, you know you have a set of values like A B C other, and then if they click on other, there up, uh, appears a, an input that says uh, if other, please specify what it is and that sort of thing. Um, so okay, so this, that's it. I don't know if we have time to show that. I, 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 let's What's the name of the feature? Show on select. That's part of uh, semantic forms. Um, uh, yeah, let's just go, go to semantic result formats and maps, I guess. I can, uh, unless you want to be at the keyboard, I can, we can switch or whatever. Uh, cool. Um, so, uh, when you do a query, you uh, by default get a table with uh, the data. But um, sem uh, semantic Mayawiki supports a whole bunch of other formats in which you can uh, visualize the data. Uh, can you go back to semantic Mayawiki? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, since recently we have uh, very nice uh, documentation about it uh, in uh, the user manual uh, on semantic Um yeah, on the right result for what's... Uh, sorry. 
Yeah. Uh, you can see a list of um, all the results from what uh, Semantic Mayality supports. Um, below that, you have another list with um, some of the formats added by extensions, which are mainly Semantic Result formats, which has a whole series of uh, such formats, and uh, Semantic Maps, which has all the mapping related things. Um, and this list is even incomplete, uh, there are even more formats. So. Um, well, why, uh, can you Should just do a query somewhere? Uh, yeah, okay. Um, you, you can uh, choose which format you use uh, simply by uh, providing the format parameter in your ask query. Maybe it's better if I just trying to find the curly bracket. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Um, that always works. Uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, so this by default, I'm now just trying. Um, well, now it uh, asks for uh, the, the page name and the uh, date property uh, when it was last modified, so it displays in a table. Um, it also has a bit of smart behavior that if you only query one property, it will display in a list. So if you uh, like make that you don't get the page, which you can do by setting main label to dash, then it will only show a list. Uh, which, of course, is not very useful if you have uh, just dates. But, um, and then you, you can just set the format by doing format equals and then the format name. Uh, example of such a format is like uh, unordered list, which you can get by UL, and then you get a bulleted list of uh, your results. You can show the timeline. Yes. Well, this is uh, the timeline format, which uh, shows um, the dates properties you queried on an uh, interactive timeline. Uh, and then you can, well, click through to the page and whatnot. Um, this also works on special ask, um, where you uh, get the list of all formats available, so you can just pick it without knowing the format name, name itself. Um, And um, the list of available options you have um, will also automatically update when you select another format. Because um, you have a set of parameters you can uh, give to ask queries to modify their behavior. And then you have an additional set of parameters that are specific to the format. Um, so, for example, if you have a timeline, you can choose um, that it displays the first date, the last date, the date in the middle, or whatnot. Um, if you have a map, you can set the white and uh, height of it. Um, it all depends on the format, which is also all documented uh, here. Um, so if you then click through to the format, uh, you get a list of all parameters you can provide, um, what type they are, and some description uh, together with some example, hopefully. Um, well, it's pretty simple. I don't know what more I can explain about it. Can you show the, the calendar format? That's a, that's a, that's a popular one. Just, just, oh. just show it. Well, I guess you can do, you can do it within special ask. Or, or well. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. 
here. Uh, this is an example of uh, the calendar format, which also uh, queries dates, and uh, in this case, displays uh, workshops and meetings from a uh, computer club. Uh, How to electrocute an elephant. <laughs> yes. Great. <laughs> <laughs> you already learned that. <laughs> So are there specific questions about result formats or things you would like to see or know about? Uh, I was going to say, for, for the, the, the maps, that do you, the, it supports three mapping services, Google Maps, Yahoo Maps, and Open Layers. Um, and Google Maps is the, is the really popular one, but uh, Open Layers is useful because uh, it doesn't require a license. Um, uh, and, and it doesn't require sending your. Is that correct? It doesn't require sending your information out to. Uh, yes. You don't have a Gmail account. Right. Mm -hmm. No, you no, don't. You well, don't need a Gmail account. You don't or need a key no, but, 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 but still, if you're, isn't there still the the, the licensing issue? Yes, you, you cannot okay. use it on a wiki that's not accessible by With everybody. Google. Right. And um, it also needs certain Google services. For example. Um, Maps and semantic maps support geocoding, so turning addresses into coordinates. For that, Google Maps will use uh, the Google service, so yes. you're sending your data to Google, uh, which you might not want to do. And it also supports KML display. And if you use the native, uh, well, the default KML handling, then for large or complex KML files, they will actually be run. They are first sent to the Google servers and rendered there and then sent back as styles. Also, the interesting thing about open layers is that you can run your own map server. Yes. And then, and yeah. then you could make a map of an idea, of make maps of things that are not geographically. Yes. Genomes are we haven't done this, but we keep looking at it because yeah. we've got things to map that are not 2D grids. Yeah. So. yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you want to show? Uh, yeah, is there an example? Kind of, image, uh, uh, of, the, of an image as a layer. Isn't there one? Uh, uh, on, on Discourse DB, there is an example. I don't know if it's still working. Yeah. But, no, I think the open, yeah, open layers is the most interesting one. Yeah, well, I, I can show uh, some examples. Uh, well, you, you can just display. Uh, regular map without any semantics, um, which is like this, and then it displays the map. Um, but you can also queries. Like simple loss query, which then gets your things onto the map. Um, you can also format the, the thing that got displayed in the pop-up where using templates. Uh, this is um, not working on MediaWiki 1.17. Um, but yeah, a, lo a lot of result formats uh, support the template parameter, which um, allows you to really customize the display of the extra data you query, uh, the other properties, um, like um, map support that, uh, list support that. Um, with that, you can, like, Create um, tables that have like conditional stuff in them. Uh, hmm? I wait. Uh, I'm lost. What do you mean? This is an example of a table uh, which is actually constructed by creating the opening of a table, the end of a table, and then a query that does a row for each result formatted using a template. And the template oh, okay. that has a if thing that checks the value and makes it green or red. Uh, okay. You had a you had a link to, down there to to a drill down example using a map. Is that just a discourse TV? Oh no, 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 no just local. Oh, okay, cool. So this is okay. So yes, uh, you were asking about this before. Yeah, okay. Here's hopefully a working example. Um, Murphy okay. starts again. It's yeah. a day. <laughs> <laughs> well, there have been a lot of changes uh, to Semantic Media Wiki in the last few days, so there's there's yeah. stuff that's not uh, uh, that's not working with the the, the latest trunk oh. version. Oh. Uh, well, this is a uh, 
well, example of a uh, yeah. distance query which um, gets, um, well, the query is apparently not shown. Um, well, here's the source. Um, which has a condition um, with a uh, coordinate in it, and then behind the coordinate in brackets, uh, distance. Uh, and then um, it will only get uh, the results which have coordinates um, that are within that distance of that coordinate. So you basically get everything in a circle around it. Uh, and you can then nicely, oh, okay. this is using uh, the, the template parameter, which is um, which I can show in a moment, which also has a distance parser function in it, which then calculates the distance between um, the point you filter on and the point it's got in the result. So uh, I at no point I entered that. Um, well, this is silly example, but be, because it's Belgium and Brussels. Uh, well. That the Netherlands is 102 kilometers from Brussels away. I never added that. It's like calculated in the template, um, and you can do a lot of cool stuff with uh, this kind of um, templates because you can also like display a link to actual Google Maps or use other external services in that, um, which also goes for the other formats, of course. So let's have a look at the distance pop-up templates, which is used to format the pop-ups. Well, it's all on one line, so that makes it um, very readable, but um, basically you have a geodistance function here, which just takes your starting coordinate and then the one you got by the query, and then some other text uh, that you saw there. Any questions about that? Somehow I got a feeling that this goes beyond what I get from the documentation. Is it right or not? Um, well, of course not everything you can do with it is documented. Yeah. Like the basic things are documented. Yeah. Um, also, the like I said, the results from the documentation really improved recently. Ah, okay. um, uh, I, I put a list on uh, semantic mirrorwiki uh, and uh, some people really helped out with like making it nicer and translating it uh, which was very nice. Um, so you, you can see all parameters in here now. You didn't used to have that. Mm. So for whatever format... Uh, so this is very recent that this changed? Or yes, yeah. this is pretty recent. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, for Didn't example, uh, where did it go? I saw that the semantic forms doc is also structured now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pages. yeah. Yeah, for example, here is a, like, a format and you okay. just can get all the parameters. Okay. And I, I this is now that. done automatically. Uh, since SMW 1.5 or uh, 1.6 or 1.6.1, there is a like parser function which actually allows you to generate the documentation. If you do SMW doc and then format name, you will get a table of all the the parameters, which type they are, um, the default value, and uh, some small explanation. Okay. Um, in the future. This can be extended to even uh, display like the restrictions of the value, like uh, it only accepts this, this, and this, like for uh, formats, yeah. um, or it needs to be in the range of zero to hundred, for example, for a percentage or something. Yeah. Um, but that's not implemented yet. Uh, but, yeah. How do you set that again? How do you? Know? What? How do you output that? You use it. To Oh, uh, basically what's selected, that gives you the documentation for the KML format, the parameter documentation for the KML format. SMU double doc only works for your output formats now? Or from, you said it's, for, it's a media wiki function, it works for all the... No, no, it, it, it's a um, function specific to semantic media wiki, okay. 
Um, it's actually based on a uh, validator, uh, other extension that semantic minority now requires in oh, 1.6, yeah. which sort of enables this behavior because you, well, specify your parameters in a declarative fashion and then let validator handle them and whatever, and then you just get what you want. And then that also allows to automatically generate documentation. And in SMW, it also adds like errors that have some meaning. Uh, for example, in earlier versions, if you did format equals foobar, then it would just get you a table. If you do that now, then you will get a table, and then underneath the table you will have a message, you will get the, the warning thing, and if you click on it, you will get um, foobar is not a valid format, you can only have one of these values, and then you get a list. Um, and for all extensions that use validator to actually define parser groups, which include maps, but not semantic main wiki at this point, you can use a similar function which is called describe, and then the uh, parser hook name, which will get you an actual, um, well, I can easily demo that one. Well, it, it will also get a similar table with uh, all parameters, but will also automatically generate some examples of the syntax uh, you can use. Um, actually, Ed, well, no, but speaking of documentation, just uh, briefly, if, if you want to read more, um, uh, and, you know, and of course, and download all of these extensions, for the most part, you can. Uh, uh, the best way to do that is go to mediawiki.org and then search on uh, whatever the extension name is. Uh, on semantic-mediawiki.org, there's also a page that has links to these extensions and many more. Uh, there's, I guess, over over 30 extensions, uh, active extensions now that uh, that tie into Semantic Media Wiki in one way or another. Uh, including some cool ones that we didn't even mention, like. Uh, like external data and many others. And some you'll be hearing about in the next uh, uh, tutorial as well. Yeah, uh, by the way, also help with the documentation is very much appreciated. These can be very small things like just making it a bit clearer from user's perspective, um, translating it, um, whatever. Uh, the more the, the last time the developers have to spend on actually creating all the documentation, the more time we can spend creating the features, making bug fixes, and well, but a lot of people are already helping out, and this is very cool. People that are doing it, thanks. Uh, so this is an example of um, cool. this scribe parser group. So this page only has a like this in it. So it describes uh, this point, <coughs> and it um, gives you some description, all the parameters, and then some auto-generated examples, blah, uh, blah. Um, you can't do this yet for ask and other parser functions in semantic community yet, but it might be possible soon, because it's easy to do now. So yeah. when you mean for translating, you mean that people will translate the documentation using a system different from Translate Wiki? Yes. Uh, yes, that's what I meant. Uh, but translating via Translate Wiki, which is uh, a wiki that actually deals with the translation of the software itself, um, is also very much appreciated. Uh, yeah. Um, but that's already going very well. I mean. Semantic Media Wiki is completely translated in a whole bunch of languages. Uh, so, um, yeah. but what, what I meant is, for example, um, this format has not been translated into any other language, but there are a bunch that, um, well, for example, this page has been translated into German and Russian, so that's more nice for the German people that they can actually read the documentation is in German.
Any, any, more, any other questions about any, anything that's been, uh, that's been covered? It's a lot of stuff. Okay, well, I guess, uh, I guess that's it. It's, it's time for lunch. Okay.